so they don't flop over and burn down the church building. We appreciate that. For those who would even just sign up and say, I'm willing to provide housing or some type of housing for people who come in from different states. It may have never been the point this blaze where you had to, but you were willing. And I appreciate that. For Miss Brandy and Miss Angela, depending which one I was around at the time, hey, I need you to, and somehow they just get done. Brandy's been doing that for years. She now knows how to read my mind and do those things, and I appreciate those things. Blaze did not just happen, and it did not happen on this scale because I'm here. Blaze happened because we are all zealous of good works and something needed to be done, and, and you were the ones to step up and say, I'll do that. And sometimes we're not told enough how much I appreciate that. There was hospitality shown. Uh, the Tagamis took in a whole bunch of knuckleheads from Eagleville. We love those kids. We see them every year when we go up there and we help them with their VBS. And, and they uh, were excited, beyond excited, when they would call and they would say, is Blaze still on? And we would say, yes, it is. And they'd say, woo-hoo. What a, great, uh, what a great time we had. Hospitality has shown them. They needed a place to stay. Edification was provided for all of us. We felt very uh, alive and, and very close-knit. And with the subtraction this year of summer camp, this weekend was needed. Not just that we wanted to do that, uh, but for you who are older and might not understand the attraction of summer camp, let me tell you this. Here's what it is. Here's a group of people from around either a region of the country or, or all parts of the country. And they're your age and they're going through the same things you're going through. And you form a strong bond with them that week and then throughout the year at times you get to see them. We didn't have that this year, but we had this. Sacrifices were made daily. Study from the men who would, would stand up and, and also in the ladies' class from the teacher there who would stand up and would, would teach our children how to remain solid as Christians. And by the way, if you had other obligations and you weren't able to make it, those lessons are good for adults too. Boy, they were good. We had influence over a vast uh, group of folks who were from our region, from our area, from our state, and even those surrounding states. We, as the seventy, excuse me, as the seventy West Church of Christ, putting on this particular weekend, had an influence to help influence them to stay with God, and you should be commended for that. Those things happened because of you. You need to know those things. You know, you can look through the Bible and find all, ki all kinds of meetings. In Mark chapter 2, you find Jesus, and he is holding what we in the South would, would tend to call a gospel meeting in somebody's house. And there are so many people there that they're pressing up against the door, and people are squoes, if that's a word, into a corner. If you remember correctly, in Mark chapter 2, there's one man who has four friends. This man can't walk, and these four friends go on top of the house, pull the roof off, and put this man down in front of Jesus, in which point Jesus says, arise and walk. Now, did those people who were coming to this house to hear Jesus speak think they would ever see that? Just imagine what you can see when folks want to hear Jesus. In John chapter 6, verses 66 through 69, there are a, a ton of disciples who are following after Jesus. And some are following him, fortunately, for food. Some are following him because they want to hear more. Some are following him because they will follow him to the end of the earth. 
In John chapter 6 and verse number 66, these disciples start to turn away. Jesus doesn't offer them food, doesn't offer them an opportunity to stay longer. And so they're hungry, and so they begin to turn away for food. And in 67, Jesus will ask this question, will you not also go? Are you going too? Everybody else is turning around and going. You, you and I understand the, the draw of hunger. Will you not go too? Maybe they had the best of intentions to come back. Maybe they had no intention to come back. But he asks those disciples, those 12 hand-picked disciples, are you going to go with them? Then it is Peter who at times is very impetuous, makes this statement to him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. That's 68. And in verse 69, he said, we are convinced and we know that you are the Son of God. Notice that. You never uh, really fully understand what you'll hear. When you meet with the children of God. You see in Acts chapter 2 where 3,000 are converted to the church as the church opens her doors. You never know how many will be saved at a, a weekend or a meeting like this. You know how many will be exposed and how many will say yes to the gospel. How many will put on the Christ in baptism. Maybe 3,000. Could be in Acts chapter 8. Could be a whole city. Acts chapter 9, it could be one person. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, you, know, you don't know how many churches will be strengthened by a weekend like we just had. We will, won't we? It's hard work, but it was worth it. There were some eight or ten different congregations in mass represented Did they have the opportunity to, to grow and to be strengthened? It's all to get the possible. The key to a success, a successful weekend like what we just had, is the key to every single gospel sermon that has ever been preached. Turn over to James chapter 1. The key to a good gospel sermon. You writing this down? This is important. The key to a good gospel sermon is to affect a change in someone so that they will go from a hearer to a doer. That's the difference. See, I can hear a whole bunch of stuff. Isn't that right? I can, I can yeah, yeah, you. Y'all probably don't know what that means. That's my lovely bride's term of endearment for the way I listen I go like this, yeah, 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 I got that, yeah, yeah. I'm not paying you any attention. If I ever say, yeah, 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 I'm not paying you any attention. Just let you know that right out of the gate. That's what she calls, yeah, yeah. What we want to do is to take the hearer from the point where he says, yeah, 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 to the point where he says, well, I'm going to have to do something. It's necessary now that I do something. James chapter 1, verse number 21, where it says, Lay apart all filthiness, superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any man be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he's like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. He beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But he that... Looketh into the perfect law of liberty. Notice this and continue therein. Here's your phrase. He being not a forgetful hearer, but, here's the change, but a doer of the work. This man will be blessed in his deeds. We want to change ourselves and change those who hear us preaching from those who, who hear what God has to say to those who do what God has to say. And we want to take this weekend, and, and we find this weekend to be a success if people take what is taught and do those things. Now, as we look at this, 
You and I have to understand this. Blaze 2020 is done, and it's in the books, never to be remembered again, except online where it will live forever, right? Right. So what do we do now? Well, if we follow the uh, example of Jesus in Acts chapter, or rather Jesus in John chapter 6, verses 30 and 31, you know where you find him? In the bottom of a boat, which most, some of us would say, woohoo, as we think going out on the boat, and he's asleep. He's in the bottom of a boat and he's asleep. Let me give you a, a, a divine Example right here. Rest is just fine. And our physical bodies need rest. How many of you have ever stayed up for 24 hours and had to work? How many of you have ever stayed up for 48 hours and had to work? 72 hours and had to work. That's three days. Four days. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what the hours count is now. Now we're way off. Four days and had to work. Five days and had to work. Bodies get tired, don't they? Six days, seven days, a month. <laughs> Our physical body needs rest. Just like it needs food, just like it needs water, just like it needs some of those other things, it needs to be cleaned, it needs rest so that it'll work at its peak efficiency. And with Blaze 2020 being in the books, rest is fine. But retirement is not. Here's what the attitude we don't want to adopt. Boy, Blaze 2020 was good. Y'all should have seen that. You should have been here. Look what we did. Oh, no. Because I have a couple of ideas swirling in my mind, you know, since Blaze is seven hours over now of what needs to happen next year. Already. Why? Because we're looking forward to those things. We're going to rest. Absolutely. We're not going to retire. Oh, no, we can't do that. You look at the book of Revelation, chapters 2 and 3, you're going to see seven different congregations. Five of those seven congregations retire. They were at one point in time doing something profitable for God. And then they kind of sat back and said, boy, we used to do those things and those were good. You know what Jesus says to those five of those seven congregations? Get back to where you were or I'm going to remove you from being even recognized as a church. I'm going to take away your candlestick. Imagine that. Jesus would say to them, you can't retire. Not while you have breath in your body and, and souls that need to be saved. You can't retire. Rest, sure. Retirement, no way. Now, now is the time that we water. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 6 where, where Paul would plant and Apollos would come by in Corinth and water and those plants would spring forth. Now is the time that we continue the teaching that we found in the forge this whole weekend. You know what's interesting about metal as it goes through a forge? It obviously is in there and it gets hot and it gets pliable and all of those type things. But if the work is not finished, if that blade is not quenched, It'll still say, it will still stay soft. It won't be effective as a tool. So we can learn all these uh, lessons, but we're going to have to put them into shoe leather. We're going to have to do the work that's required now is time for prayer. Praying for those, obviously, who were here uh, in attendance. Praying for those who were here speaking. Praying for those who will be here next year. Praying for the success, not only of Blaze, but of our congregation. Because I want you to know this, and I, I, if you get nothing else, I want you to understand this. The ability that we have to sponsor or, or to host a weekend like this is an absolute 
blessing from God. We should treat it that way. It's our opportunity to, to have our brothers and sisters at, at our place and, and we get to show them some good old-fashioned southern hospitality and we get to hear a portion of God's word and we get to strengthen ourselves together. And now is the time to pray. We can pray for all of those who are found on our sick list, those who are bereaving. We can pray for our ministers and we surely do appreciate that. We pray for our elders. We can pray for our deacons. Pray for our upcoming events, no matter what they are. And we're going to have an upcoming blaze. So you can start tonight, if you want to, praying for that. It'll be sometime in October next year. Realistically, it's only going to be time that tells us how effective this weekend is. And right now, well, we don't have enough time from the event to judge it. The attendance was good. The, the fellowship was second to none. The, uh, the edification that was found there was fantastic. The, the friendships that were forged and were, were continuing to be forged were, were solidified. And there are others who had never been exposed to the truth. Those who maybe had not been exposed to the truth very long. Who because of your efforts were exposed to Jesus Christ and the truth of his gospel this weekend right here. But now... Now we go back to John chapter 9, verse number 4. As we listen once again to the words of Jesus, I must work the works of him that sent me while it's day. For night cometh when no man can work. Now the easy part is over. You ask a preacher, and you can ask either one of us, what's the easiest part of your job? And you're looking at it. And you sitting out there go, there's no way that's the easiest part. This is the easiest part. There's a lot of work and a lot of study that goes into these parts. But now this weekend for our congregation is, is, is in the books. It's, it's over. And the actual work of this weekend has to begin. And that work of this weekend is where I begin with myself. And I take those lessons that have been archived for us online, and I take those lessons where I have those notes from those things, and I begin to put myself up against the standard of God's Word. And when I do, I'm not sure about you, but when I do, I say, boy, I missed it right there. And I should have done better right here. And I begin to harden myself. I begin to grow as a Christian. What about you? Are you up to the work of this weekend? Are you up to making sure that you are the right metal, shaped by the right person in the right forge for the right reason? Are you up to the task of seeing and understanding if you are a child of God? A faithful child of God. God doesn't expect us just to obey his will and that's it. What God expects from man in one sentence is this, to be his faithful child. Not just his child. But in order to be his faithful child, first I must be his child. I must hear what he has to say, Romans 10, 17. must believe those things, John 8, 24. I must repent of my sin, Luke 13, 3. Confess that Jesus is the Christ, Matthew 10, 32. Be baptized in water, Acts 2, 38, for the remission of my sins. To be raised to walk in a newness of life, Romans 6, 1 through 4. That way Jesus would say, you're not going to get to the Father, but through me, by my blood. That's where it's accessed. 
And if I've done those things, and I'm looking at myself against the standard of God's word, and I say, I missed it right here. I should have done better at that. How public is that known? Because those things are not known out in public, then handle those things alone with God. But if those things are known publicly, then there are those out in our community who look at us and say, well, they say one thing, but they do another. And sometimes, without even meaning to, Sometimes we can damage the Lord's church in that fashion and never have that intent. If it's known out there, confess it publicly, repent of it publicly here, and take care of those issues so that we can be seen by the outside world secondly and first by God as being pure, righteous, and holy. And do those things right now while we stand for your encouragement.